This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. So guys, welcome to the round of 16. We're going to get into this with Ryan. And I'll tell you what, I'm wearing a lovely outfit for you tonight. Check it out. Umbro since 1924. Okay, let's get into this right now. Okay, guys, welcome back in. As you can see, I'm really pumped up for this. I mean, we're out of the group phase. The group phase is donezo, and now we're into the funzo where it's round of 16 and anything can happen. But I'm going to give you some real big pointers before we get to Ryan. You know, Ryan. Ryan Anderson, CFC Mid Best Podcast, our buddy. Well, he's back for more because, as you can see behind me, that's Holland, Nederlander, against the USA. We're going to be talking about that and seven other games because there's eight games in the round of 16. But I'm going to give you some real big pointers. You're going to feel good after this when you hear this, especially Canadians. Now, confederation teams that have made it into the round of 16. UEFA has eight. CAF, the African Confederation, has two. Conmebol, dos, two. Yeah? OFC, nada. AFC has three. And CONCACAF, one uno so there's your there's your breakdown for that guys unbeaten teams at the world cup this is going to shock you because i know most of you really haven't sort of focused on this holland group a unbeaten england usa group b unbeaten croatia morocco group f canadians unbeaten two anti two teams unbeaten there group f that'll probably make you feel good why you didn't get through to the next round Morocco, Croatia, unbeaten. Can they stay unbeaten? And here's the thing. Dark horses to win it all. I want to hear from you guys down below. Yeah, you know what to do, poets. Drop us a comment. But Morocco or Portugal are my dark horses to win it all. Sounds crazy, huh? What's your dark horse to win it? Down below. Okay, with that said, let's get over to our buddy Ryan Anderson and uh, let's chew the USA and Holland because this is the first one we're looking at. Seven more to come. Ryan, welcome in, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing great. This is going to be a great show. Happy to be here. And let's pick some good round of 16 winners. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what are you thinking about uh, the big game? Because uh, Holland, big number at the moment. USA undefeated. Holland undefeated. Who's going to be undefeated after this game? What's your take? Well, the fact that I've seen that the USA has been playing, I think this is a big upset alert. But also the fact that it's starting to come out that Netherlands is facing a flu bug in their camp. I think it just makes it even more likely that an upset is about to be springed here because I think this is a minor upset alert. But for me, I think the USA, they got the talent. It's a very similar group of players and a similar growth on their chart. They're both young teams. They're both very tactically drilled teams and they're both teams that have winning mentalities. The players have a winning mentality on the US, but the players and the coach with the Netherlands, Louis van Hall, amazing manager over the past God knows how long. Yeah. One of the best managers out there. Coach Netherlands before, Coach Man United deserved to have more time there, but that's ba da ba. For me though, I think the USA finds a way to win this one late. I have two to one in this matchup. I think the USA will take advantage of that flu bug. I think they believe in themselves wholeheartedly to get through this round and go deeper in this tournament. They have a belief in that room. They have a Put Spa in that room, and they're getting Pulisic back. They have Weah, who's a rising star in this tournament. Tyler Adams, who's an amazing captain. I think the USA finds a way to win this. I'll tell you what, you do have a chance in this one. I mean, I'm not saying that this is totally one-way traffic. I think that, yes, you got to admit that Holland is probably the big team coming in. But the USA's done themselves no harm at all in this competition. I mean, they've faced the board defensively. They've got wins when they needed to. They've gone through stressful times, especially the Iran game last up. I mean, you've got to hand it to them. It's not been an easy way to get into the round of 16. And I think the USA is definitely a threat to Holland. You've mentioned the flu bug. Yeah, absolutely. I think at the end of the day, Holland is the team to beat themselves. Now, my prediction, not to go against your brother, but I have to think that Holland's going to win this probably 2-1. to one. So I'm going the other way. Now, the next team I want to talk about, Argentina taking on Australia, mate. Do you think Argentina is going to have a tough time with this? Because, you know, Australia's showed up fairly well so far. Two wins so far. You wouldn't have seen that coming. And i got to say, Denmark should have been probably the team to face Argentina and not Australia. What's your take on that one? 
For me, Australia's played well in this tournament. This is no disrespect to Australia, but Argentina with Enzo Fernandez, Lionel Messi, the team that they're playing as, they've definitely been questionable throughout their group, but I think this is the time that they really kick on. They've had moments of kicking on. That game against Poland, they should have scored four or five goals. Yeah, Messi sure. should have scored two penalties. Yep. But for me, I believe that Argentina should walk over this Australia team. They're not a bad team, Australia, but Argentina has the talent to finally break through, and it's going to happen at some point because this team wants Messi to have his World Cup. He wants his World Cup, and he's got a team that's trying to carry him that far. I have to say, I see a 3-0 win towards Argentina in this round. That's all I can see. Yeah, you got to say, the Australians have probably hit their ceiling and uh, coming up against Argentina, they're waking up now. Shocker against Arabia. But I think, you know what, lighting a fire under Argentina is probably the best thing could have happened to them because since then they've come into somewhat decent form. Not great, but they've really come alive. So I think, yeah, end of the day for Australia. I'm agreeing with you there, my friend. Argentina is my pick too. Now, looking over to Japan and Croatia. Interesting game. I mean... Japan, decent team, have really overachieved slightly, I'd say. But Croatia's a big number in the world. What, what do you think is coming down in this one? I think this will be a very defensive game because you have Japan's blue lock defense. You have Croatia's great vaunted world midfield with Brozovic, Maldric. And for me, I think this will be a very defensive game. I think each team will get a really good chance they score. They'll have a couple more chances here and there. But I think this goes all the way. I think this goes all the way to penalties. Japan's going to fight hard, but I think Croatia has the more team with more experience in penalties. They won some shootouts in Russia to get to the final. I think Croatia ends up winning in penalties, a one-to-one -one draw through extra time, and five to three on penalties. Interesting penalties. So the first one in the competition in the first round of the knockouts is going to go to penalties. Okay, interesting. You know, that could be. I mean, Croatia's got the experiences for what I can take. And Japan's got the eager and the and the industry and, and great, great flowing in the final third. So if anybody's going to trouble Croatia, it could be Japan because Croatia's got destiny written all over them. But I've got to say, in this one, I'm going with Croatia for my money. I know there's the, the great love you have for Japan, and it is possible. But for me, I think I'm going to go with Croatia, absolutely. Next one up, world champions. Seems to be coming alive. Benzema may well be coming back, is the thoughts. Taking on Poland, Polski. What's your take on that one? Poland has not been that great in this World Cup. Even though they got out of their group, they sort of stumbled their way through. Mexico sort of handed it to them, and Saudi Arabia did a lot of work there. They did have a good win against Saudi, and Lewandowski got a goal there, but I don't think Lewandowski gets the service that he gets at Bayern, or that he got at Bayern, and he's starting to get at Barca. He needs a lot of service. He's a world-class finisher, but he doesn't really create his own chances well enough. France has been playing amazingly through this group. I'm honestly a bit surprised about France. I had them falling victim to the champion's curse. They did not, but France is playing well. Griezmann, Mbappe, Giroud scores a couple of goals. They have a great defense. I think France will easily win this one. I would say three to one. I think it's a pretty easy win for France. They'll still have their title defense on at the end of this round. I don't see Poland putting up much of a fight against France. Got to agree with you there, my friend. I think that France is now coming into their stride. And when you've got weapons like Mbappe, just for one, yeah? Giroud's fantastic. I mean, Mr. Experience knows where to be, and he makes beautiful goals. Mbappe is the, the visage or the visage of the future. I mean, if he can hit the ground running in this game, I fear what the score could be. Because I think as this continues with France, I think they're building momentum. It may be the next round that troubles France, but i got to agree with you. I'm going with France as well. Now, the next one up is the people who gave the world the game, who haven't won for many years, England, taking on Senegal. And I mean, for me, I love what Senegal have brought. And if there is to be um, an interesting game, I think this could be the one. What are you thinking? I think England-Senegal will be a very interesting game, even though Idrissa Gwe is out on yellow card accumulation for Senegal. Ali Ucisse has made a great team effort, got his team playing very hard in this tournament. Edouard Mendy's been great in goal, just like he has been for Chelsea when he has had the chance. Senegal is just a very, very good team. 
and I like how they're playing. But I think England, they're good enough and they have enough talent to nudge by Senegal. I think it's going to be a tight game for the three Lions. But I think in the end, they'll find a way to win, whether it's Bellingham scoring a goal, Saka being as, as, ma as amazing as he has been in this tournament. Maybe Rashford is a super sub. He had a great game against Wales, Marcus Rashford did. Yeah, I think sure. England finds a way to get out of this game. We'll be hearing it's coming home for a good couple more days at the very least. You know, Ryan, every time I hear people saying it's coming home, I've been listening to that song for so long. It's coming home, it's coming home. Nothing, nothing's coming home. I've heard it all before, mate. It's, it, they should scrap the song. I mean, really, it, it, it seems to me that song jinxes England. And I mean, it sets the fans and, and, and everybody else up for failure. And the press just love it over there in the UK to set everyone up for failure. But on this game, I tell you what, I draw back to the 1990 World Cup. And I'm picking out a great African team from the 90 World Cup. Cameroon wasn't anything but spectacular at that World Cup. And they met up with England as well. It ended 3-2 victory for England. But on that game, a gentleman called Gary Lineker scored two penalties to get England through. Had it been not been for those penalty kicks, Cameroon would have slayed England. Now, it's a similar situation because Cameroon were not blown away with stars. They had a team. Senegal is a team. And yes, Mendy, wow, fantastico. This game sets itself up for the sleeping lions and they could be the sleeping lions coming into this game because sometimes they just don't wake up for the first 20 minutes. If Senegal can steal a lead and then defend with everything they got, well, you know, history hasn't got a, a, a repeating itself sort of situation here, but you've certainly seen in 1990 that England really got close to being kicked out of the World Cup by a CAF African team. So. My take is this. Yes, I think that England should win this one. I think I'm looking at possibly one, maybe two nil. I don't think they are going to slay Senegal at all. But if it is going to go the other way, you've got to say there is a chance that, man, oh man, it could be an upset. This one could be the upset I'm looking for in the World Cup in the round of 16. But I've got to say my pick is England. Now going against the run of play, Morocco getting out of Group F Fantastic so far, unbeaten, taking on Spain. Give me your lowdown on that one. Morocco's been an amazing team in this tournament, finishing top of Group F, Akraf Hakimi. They also have Hakim Ziyech, El Nezri from Sevilla. They have a lot of great players. They also have a good team spirit. They have a great coach that they replaced, of course, their last coach with because of the fights with their biggest players, and it Absolutely. turned out to work wonders. I mean, look how and good that's Spain. worked for them. Look how good. I mean, 10 games in, and up until now, they had gone six games without taking a goal. I mean, this guy's been a magician. Back to you, mate. And we also have Spain coming back with their tiki taka football. Some people said they need a bit more seasoning, but to me, it looks like they're back to their old days. They're back to their old ways. Pedri, Gavi, Morata scoring goals like he never did at Chelsea, which kind of makes me mad, but I'll be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but Unai Simon being a great goalkeeper in this tournament, they got a good defense. They got a strong midfield. I didn't agree with Busquets being there, but in the end, it looks like it may be working out instead of Thiago. Busquets being there might have worked out. But for me, I think this is going to be a goal fest. I have a feeling that this is going to be a high octane game where it could go either way. But I think Spain nudges it three to two. I think there's going to be multiple goals. It's going to be high octane. This might just be the best match of the round because both teams have a attacking mindset and a forward mindset. But I think Spain, with their quality, takes it three to two. So you're saying the Moroccan dream is over? Sadly, yes. I'll tell you what, they've given uh, value for dollar on their performance so far. I mean, the fans in the stadiums that have watched their own nation, the, Mor the nation of Morocco, they can be absolutely proud as punch of what they've delivered. I mean, it's been an amazing feat. i got to say, I do agree with you on the Spain going through, but from my heart, and sometimes you come from your heart in this game because it's all about the beautiful game, but from my heart and the game and the beautiful thing of football, I would love to see Morocco go through because they have been a revelation in this World Cup. And for me, they've been the surprise team and great entertainment. And also, I have to hand it, that they are probably the most respectful team in victory 
or in any measure of the game that I've seen at a World Cup. I'm not saying that other teams don't have respect. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying from the level where Morocco's coming from, very humble, and they respect everything, I think that you've got to say it's a beautiful story, no? Yes, it's a very beautiful story. And I love to see the underdogs do well. And it's also very similar. Their 2018 World Cup was very similar to what Canada faced this year. So what I'm trying to say is, is maybe that's a blueprint to root for. So there's a blueprint to build off of, but for my Canadian friends, but Morocco, I'm happy to see them do well. They got nice fans. I've definitely had a lot of interactions throughout these, the Croatia and Morocco videos, but they've got some great fans. They have some very humble fans and they got some fans who really love the sport. And it's going to be sad to see them bow out of the world cup, whenever that might be. Absolutely. Now, closing down, I'm going to give you uh, pretty much, guys, what I'm saying is my quarterfinal picks. Out of the round of 16, I'm looking for Holland taking on Argentina. What you got, Ryan? I got United States, Argentina. Beautiful, beautiful. And I got Croatia, Brazil in the next quarterfinal. Same here, Croatia, Brazil. Then I've got France taking on England. Same here, France, England. And then i got Spain taking on Portugal. Same here, Spain and Portugal. So I'll tell you what, guys, as you see, I've got it pretty close. Ryan's got it pretty close. What have you got down? What have you got for your final eight? What have you got for your round of 16s? Drop them down below, guys. Let's have it, because so I'll tell you what, it all starts in the morning. So get your bids in now. And Ultimate Soccer's giving away a beautiful prize. Remember that soccer ball from the 78 World Cup that I was holding a few weeks ago? That's up for grabs. Whoever has the picks now, all the way to the final, and you've got to bring them in fifascup at gmail.com just look down there you can see it fifascup at gmail.com bring your emails guys tell us who your round of 16s are and give us your final four i'm looking for your final four fifascup at gmail.com pick them all guys thanks very much for your time ryan thanks very much for your time mate it's been an absolute blast again my friend this was an amazing show can't wait to see how this turns out on the round of 16 gonna be a great round of games Let's have some more World Cup fun. The Ultimate Soccer Show. Join me. Listen. You'll love it. Everybody does.